Welcome to a special episode of Alluvium Insider, where we're going to go over all of the regions in Alluvium in detail, concept art, and we're going to preview the Alluvidex. I think this is going to be the first time any human on Earth has seen the Alluvidex in action sneak preview. And today, when we explore all these land regions, we couldn't do it without Roger, our lead concept artist. Roger, how are you doing today? And hey. it's great to have you here on the episode. Hi, thanks. Nice to meet you. It's uh, it's good. It's the first time I think for many on the team to actually see me in person, so uh, or through the camera. So, and to cool. see your amazing fish tank back there. And just so you guys know, Roger, uh, as our lead concept artist, worked on a lot of the concept art you're going to see today. And so today we're going to go over a lot of the lore, the details, the background, and sort of the juicy details and bits behind each of these regions of land that you will be experiencing uh, through our overworld and also to a certain extent through Alluvium Zero. Uh, the different land is going to be uh, kind of branded and textured uh, like the region that it exists in, which is really exciting. So what else do we have planned? I mentioned the Alluvidex a moment ago, and I want to qualify this and say, the Alluvidex we're showing right now is a pre-land sale Alluvidex. This is a work in progress, guys. Bugs and glitches might be there. We're literally polishing it up right now before the land sale. So the prices and numbers you see in there are going to be inaccurate. But the whole point of showing you the Alluvidex today is so we can navigate around and check out these regions and get all this juicy information from Roger on what all of these regions are all about. And lastly, this is just a video telling you about regions. We've got deep dive articles where you can read about all the regions on alluvium.medium.com in-depth articles, each region, all the concept art. If you really want to get nerdy, just totally freak out and nerd out over all this region stuff, we've got it all there for you in written format as well. Our first region we're going to be talking about today is Abyssal Basin. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull it up. This I think is the first time anybody in the whole world has seen the Iluvidex live in action. And let's pull it up here. And what I want you to do for everyone is to help them understand what is Abyssal Basin in a nutshell, and how is it unique as a region in Alluvium? I think Abyssal Basin is basically, well, it is a basin, and it's largely a mangrove forest. It's very, very wet, combined with sort of like a, how do you say that, like a, a swamp. And it has some very special features uh, of giant, giant trees, enormous trees that just like pump out water from wherever it's coming and flood the region that way. Um, and if you, yeah, if you're gonna take a closer look at the concept art, you'll sort of see, I can, I can take you there and sort of show you what it's like to be in that region and how you play through it. Got it. I love pulling up the Alluvidex, by the way. You can actually go to all of the regions as you just saw a moment ago and actually explore each of them and even look at all the land plots and everything in the regions, which is really, really cool. The concept art is way cooler, though. So let's pull up the first concept art. What are we looking at here? Wow, this beautiful obelisk. Give this us some is, details. Uh, yeah, this is where you actually arrive. You know, when you enter the region, this is the the, the obelisk. You travel by the means of the obelisk, and right now you're sort of like at the center of the region. Almost, I think in every region, the obelisk is the center of the region, and this is where you start your journey, basically. <clears throat> this appears to be the wettest and swampiest uh, of all of the regions by far. Yes, by far. And this is breathtaking. Traveler's Gorge. Tell us about this. Yeah, so because the obelisks are eventually connected with one another, um, the location of the Abyssal Basin is made it so that a lot of the paths leading towards uh, Abyssal Basin sort of are combining when they arrive at the obelisk. And it made it so that this sort of this area has become sort of cut down through the forest because the energy from the obelisks and the people traveling sort of cut a tunnel through it basically. And that's what we're looking at right now. I love the scale too. You can see the ranger there in the center of the frame, that tiny little dot there with uh, Mozart. It's just nuts <laughs> to see the scale on these spaces, how breathtaking it is. And then here is an entirely different looking swamp area. I love this name, Titanicus Mushrooms. Whoever yes. came up with that name deserves a raise. Tell us about these giant mushrooms. 
Well, basically, the idea is that these uh, this I think is to the um, southwest or at least to the west part of uh, of the region. It's way more swampy, so there, as you can see, there's way less trees. And the the Titanicus mushrooms is a type of mushroom that sort of grows underground. They're absolutely enormous. I think maybe there's an Arlen in the picture because usually I push people to put a human for skill in there. Uh, they may, have, may not be there, but um, they grow underground. And as they keep growing and growing, at some point, they sort of start to raise up. And basically everything that is above them, they just lift into the air. And that's how like a whole new playing field uh, opens itself up because you can now not only explore below the mushrooms, but also on top of them. Right. The traversal mechanics in the overworld to be able to double, triple jump up there, et cetera, to get to the top of these mushrooms. And I really exactly. love the alluvium kind of colored, let's call it bioluminescence. I don't know if that's yes. accurate underneath yep. the mushrooms there. That's yep. really beautiful. So typically under a mushroom is interesting. It looks like almost like an accordion, but this is like a bioluminescent cyber fantasy accordion almost. <laughs> it looks, it looks nuts. I love the design there. And this one does have a person for scale in the swamp, yep. as you can see right over here, just letting everybody know the scale of these giant mushrooms. Yeah, and if you can see in the top right, there's actually something bigger growing there too, but it's a bit fake. But this uh, this was a piece that's used to sort of get a good idea of what the acid would look like in the environment. Um, this is, yeah, this eventually, I think right now in the level itself, these are all modeled and textured and they have the light coming from below. They populate a large area of the, of the forest. They're pretty cool. That is really cool. I'm just curious to know, with something like Titanicus mushrooms, does somebody just come up in, in a meeting like, I want to make some giant mushrooms, or does somebody just go straight to drawing it? Or how, how do you come up with an idea like that for an area? Uh, like this. I'm just curious. Uh, yeah. Okay. So basically, most of the time, there's this, uh, there's an idea, uh, like a small text probably put in there by Aaron, um, and then from that text, I start to, you know, concept out and ideate like what the region is gonna look like, or what's gonna what's gonna feature, and then it's sort of like an ideation process between me and Grant and Aaron and sometimes Ben and Mark or whatever. And then everybody sort of like comes together and has these inputs and ideas of how we actually build it. But usually all the way at the beginning where the concept art department does its work, I usually write out these region descriptions. And then I get my team to sort of take parts of that description and sort of visualize it. And then I usually help a little bit with some sketches or some references and, or I do uh, a piece of myself to sort of help them on their way. Awesome. So it's a very fluid, creative process between multiple parties, both on the game oh, yeah. design side and on, in your, on, and within the concept art area. Definitely. Yeah. Like this whole game is basically just a collaboration of 200 artists, right? It's, uh, it's just everybody works together everybody has their own ideas and inputs and their specialty on how you actually make it beautiful and Fair eventually uh, everybody's got to do their part and then if they do you end up with something very cool you just called me an artist so i'm cool with that sure here's, here's another look hey, at it's, the... it's an art <laughs> at doing this right so exactly here's another look at the mushrooms kind of from another angle and in a slightly different style which is really really yep. cool to see those different styles and then here is here's what's really cool about Abyssal Basin. Totally different look now. Obviously, yes. it's still wet and swampy-ish, but it's now going from this very swampy, mushroomy type of environment to something very different. What are we looking at here? Uh, yeah, basically a wetland, right? This is um, blue wood, which is uh, yeah, like I say, a wetland, and there's like all of these um, waterfalls coming down from the edge of the basin. With, if you see, if you look all the way back in the picture, you see like this giant tree sort of like creating those waterfalls. And in the level, if you would be playing, you would actually see like the whole cliff face just littered with all these gigantic trees. I think uh, bluewood well trees is what they call. And they sort of have a massive root system underneath that pump up water from the ground or ocean or whatever. And they actually take the nutrients from the water and they 
spew it out again from the top. Very cool. I, I man, it's so so amazing looking. And <laughs> and the thing is, we need variety in these spaces that we're engaging with in Illuvium. Um, as people are grinding, they're collecting resources and what have you. We need that visual variety, and this is the same area, but now with significant visual variety. So, what happened here that made well, blue wood turn blue into green? Yeah, so then it becomes green wood at night. Actually, the radiation sort of from the from the earth or from the planet that they pump up uh, influences the bioluminescence in the water, and then eventually, when sunlight disappears, it starts to glow and then it turns blue wood into green wood. Love it. Very cool. And then here's a an entirely uh, different part of Abyssal Basin looking like some remains of a Leviathan. Tell us about this. Yes. So between Blue Wood, which is an area, there's like a, kind of like a, a lake or a stream, or basically a big river that you have to cross to make it into the uh, Abyssal Grove. And because it's so deep and muddy and... I guess at some point Leviathans were there and they got stuck and they couldn't move and they died. And basically the remains remain in that area. And now nature is sort of taken over and they're growing stuff over there. And I think in the next slide, you will see, uh, yeah, you will see sort of like the enormity of the, of the river and of the skeletons that still remain there and how you can actually... Mm. Yeah, it's, this is the bridging between bridge. Bluewood and Greenwood. Mm. Very cool. Uh, I love how as we're going through this art, you guys have thought of not only each individual area, but the transitions, the entrances, and the exits to each area. So visually, it can walk gamers through, um, you know, just really kind of, it doesn't have to necessarily be linear, but it almost kind of like leads you into the next area, I've noticed. Yes. With yep. these trans, these very deliberate transitions between areas, can you talk a little bit about the thinking behind that? We're going to see a lot more of that in the other regions as well. Yeah, so because like everything that you're seeing right now is uh, is basically taking place underneath the safe dome of the obelisk, right? And this is um, this is sort of like the the area that we have to work with, and we know that players will be there. And we know that it has to be a certain size, but we also want to make it so it's a nice flow for people to walk through the regions so they don't have to travel one direction, travel back, travel the other direction, travel back, because that becomes very annoying. <laughs> Especially we expect people to want to go out there and, and grind and you know get the alluvials that they want, but if they didn't find the ones that they did, they'll have to go back and then... You know, we because they're gonna be in the region so many times, we don't want them to get this this annoyance when they're exploring the region. So there has to be thought out how people are going to play through the region. And that's also influencing the design basically. But not so much the lore. Um in yeah, not so much lore. We we make sure that um we have enough cool ideas that we can somehow implement while not sacrificing the gameplay mechanics, basically. That makes sense. And this is wild. Even more variety in Abyssal Basin here with last yes. ripples, with these, uh, I mean, the look mushroom flower ask. Tell us about this root system here. Yeah, so this is basically the bridge um, or the border of coming from out of last ripples into the Abyssal Grove. And the Abyssal Grove is like the largest part of Abyssal Basin, which is like a mangrove forest with a lot of roots and gigantic trees and mushrooms and uh, flowers. And because it's so dense, uh, there's barely any light coming through. So all the plants and flowers that, that grow in there have found a way to sort of self-illuminate. And that's of course sort of they the, have, and it makes them glow and look gorgeous, <laughs> which is it's great. It's a bit for, avatarish, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. And then here's a mangrove-like forest, still in the same region, guys. Yeah, because it's so large, it actually there's a whole bunch of separate um, themes almost to certain parts of the region and certain unique assets that only grow or can be found in one part and etc. And as you travel through it, you're, you're going to be traveling through all of these different themes, basically. Very cool. 
And abyssal pumpkins is probably my favorite aspect of this region. <laughs> um, tell me about abyssal pumpkins. Are these evil pumpkins? Are, yes. Are, are they edible? Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit more about them. Okay, so the idea is that they um, there's like a chicken and egg story here because if they if they eventually if they grow and they start glowing as you see in the image, that means that it's almost ripe, you know, and it will eventually pop and it will fall down into the abyssal grove water where it will start to sort of shed off its light and then it will start over again and then underneath the water you will also find these sort of like pumpkins laying around that are still glowing or dimming and then as they sort of stop glowing um, they start to rebirth basically and they will they will not show any light and they will start to again feed on the nutrients and gases or whatever that's in the water and they start to create this build up this energy again and they will sort of move out of the water until eventually they pop and they fall back into the water. Love it. The circle of life, very like yes. it's like teeming with life. Um, very, very cool. And then here's an example of what I was talking about earlier of a very deliberate entrance to an area that kind of leads you in with that sliver of light here. Tell us about this. This is um, the Keldrix Elt, um, which is also like a bit of a homage to Kendrick, who's one of our concept artists who did this work. <laughs> um, this is a gigantic a blue wood well tree that's really out of place uh, it's like in the middle of the forest it's the only one there and it's absolutely enormous and it sticks out over all of the abyssal grove so even if you were at the obelisk you would sort of see it all the way at the back uh, sticking out of the forest uh, which is making it unique because you know we don't we don't really know why it's there, you know. Um, the only thing we do know is that there's a sort of flooded root system underneath with a sort of sinkhole that's dragging in water. So a lot of things go into that uh, or float off into that entrance and gone. Um, and it's hollow, so you can sort of climb up in there. It's a pretty special place. Definitely an area for exploration and oh, discovery yeah. um, and, and, and building that in to the design makes a lot of sense. And then here's where everything ends at the sea in the north. So yes. tell us about this. Yeah, this is basically um, if you want to go a day to the beach, I guess. Uh, this is at the north. You have this root system that sort of lands in beach and in deeper sea. And you see the stormy clouds outside at the horizon. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like the, the, how do you say that? Like a, a dam also for the seawater, you know, mm -hmm. just like in, in, on, on earth, we have these mangrove trees or mangrove forests that function as a sort of dam when a barrier, come in. yeah, a it's, barrier. A, it's a yeah. barrier to keep the sea from, um, uh, cr destroying, you know, different uh, exactly. aspects of the land and eroding it. That's yes. cool. Mangrove barrier there. Uh, that's great. Personally, I'm not going to the beach. Um, anywhere in alluvium, because uh, I feel like every region will just is like designed to kill you somehow. But anyway, yeah, sure, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool, and that's it for Abyssal Basin. That was just one region, guys. This is deep, as you can see. It's, uh, some of the regions are far more developed than others, and we're going to be going over those today, uh, of course. But the next region that we're going to be getting into is Brightland Steps. Am I pronouncing the steps correctly there? I know it's kind of spelled a bit Yeah, fancy. I heard uh, some people call it steepies. Steepies? Or, uh, oh, boy. Ste I don't know. Or uh, steepies. And, uh, so here we are on the Aluvidex once more, guys. Once again, all the numbers here are placeholders. But as you're navigating here and you're taking a look at land, if you're interested in any of the regions such as Brightland Steps or Steepies, I guess, is the <laughs> pronunciation being kicked around, this is it. Brightland Steps right here. What is the elevator pitch? What is the summary of Brightland Steps and what makes it unique? Well, the place that we're playing in Illuvium Overworld basically is lifted up in the air. It's, uh, it's a very unique place. Somehow it's up in the clouds. Something is holding it up and... Uh, it's kind of weird, but if you, if you go there and you start exploring, maybe you'll find out. So 
Got it. Yeah. So, so as you can tell, Roger is being cagey about details about each of these regions in terms of the very specifics, uh, namely because we don't we want you gamers to explore all of this. We don't want to spoil it. So, Brant, Brightland steps. Let's take a look. This is what he's talking about. Yes. If you can see at the background, there's all kinds of root systems and a lot of stuff is elevated into the air. And as, as we go through the, yeah, so this is the, the obelisk region. This is actually in Brightland Valley, which is like the flattest of basically the whole region where you'll be playing. You'll almost be surrounded by all kinds of blocks of world lifted into the air, held up by these gigantic purplish roots. I love that there's a valley in this area, though, and that's where the obelisk is located. So you can kind of get the scale as you look up from the valley oh, yeah. at all of the elevated locations, uh, which it's, uh, that scale, yeah, it's intimidating. <laughs> so lush, so so different than Abyssal Basin, which yeah. obviously was very te was teeming with swamp and marsh life. This is teeming with more like lush greenery here in this case. And here's that sort of view, if you will, uh, from the valley looking out. Yes. Yeah, the Brightland Steps is very much a, a happy place. You shouldn't be feel like you're in danger or you feel like there's a mosquito in your neck. You know, it's not not like that. It's it's happy. It's it's kind of open. It's very a lot of fresh air. It's uh, there's a lot of clouds, but a blue sky. You know, it's not warm, but it's just nice. You know, like spring can be, I guess. And uh, Okay, so this, sky. So that's this might be number one vacation spot, according to Roger, in all of the alluvium regions. Now, this mm -hmm. cavern entrance um, is, once again, another example of leading the player into a new yes. area and making it intriguing. Tell us about where we are going here. Yeah, well, this is called Ripcage Cavern. This is uh, how we sort of like design uh, basically the world coming together and creating this slitter into the, into the land. And you're basically going underneath a landmass. So if you go to the next um, slide, you'll see that you're actually starting to climb underneath a landmass and below you, there's actually sky. So you're up in the air. So you got to watch out if you're not going to fall down into, you know, I don't know what's below you, but you might fall onto it. Um, so it's a happy place. It's lush, but you could just die falling down. So there's always something trying to kill you in Olivium. Yeah, and guess. then here's the exit out of that yes. area as well. And yeah, exactly. And the exit actually br brings you into a lorem ipsum. Um, and if you're, if you would be walking out of this place, uh, if you go back, then you'd, you'd sort of like enter almost an arena kind of feeling. It's, it's like this park idea with waterfalls and blocks of land and there's holes in the ground, but you're surrounded by sort of like this almost walls of giant rocks, which you can also climb and get on top to, so you'll be able to continue your journey to the next area. I'm such a dummy. I thought Lorem Ipsum was literally a placeholder name, but that's oh, yeah. actually the name. Lorem Ipsum is like the most popular placeholder name, but that's the actual name of that area within this region. That's that's interesting. That's, that's, that's I guess, uh, an inside joke. <laughs> so yeah, we were, I remember this this call that I had with uh, Dimitri and I think Aaron maybe, and we were just sort of like trying to come up with names for this. And at some point, I just clicked on the Photoshop and it said Lore Mipsum. I'm like, uh, why don't we just call this Lore Mipsum? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> so then we went for Lore Mipsum, and I guess it stuck around. There you go. So creative decisions can be made very deliberately or just on the fly, and everybody's like, yeah, cool, let's do that. So there's definitely different ways that these different aspects of alluvium are created. Here, oh, yeah. we're leading to, in my opinion, the most fascinating area, uh, leading to those two towers. And just look yes. at the scale of this, these towers towering into the sky, the waterfalls in the background. This is just massive to behold. Yeah, this is um, like it, it changed significantly in the in the actual game because they got even bigger. They got oh, like, wow. absolutely <laughs> enormous. When you're looking up, these like wherever you are in the level, there's like these two gigantic things sticking out in the sky. So it got uh, even bigger. That was not what I was expecting you to say. <laughs> I, I was expecting you to say it got smaller, but of course it got bigger with Grant got bigger. back there. When, exactly. Yeah. Just I, I I've been in a private session with him before. 
And all of this concept art you're seeing, Grant and the team will go and handcraft all of what all of these aspects from the concept art will be in the actual overworld game, handcrafting it, placing the rocks and the different um, elements into the space for players to enjoy. And that's really cool that if you have a cool concept in the concept art, why not make it even bigger? That makes sense. Um, exactly. Really interesting. So this is leading to the two towers. And then here is a plateau. Yes. So the highest point, except for the two towers, is Felrose Plateau, which is, um, as you can see, it's a bit less lush. And it's also like getting covered in ice every now and then because it's so high up and the wind is so strong. When a cloud comes by, it actually starts to sort of freeze everything. But as soon as it passed by, the sun is there again and it sort of turns back to normal. Um, that's kind of like this this thing that will uh, characterize this this piece of land. Even more biome diversity and mechanics and variety for players that are going to be grinding these regions over and over again. That totally makes sense. And the, believe it yeah. or not, this is the same region here. So remember Abyssal Base and everything, you know, you had as aspects, of, aspects of a region that looked totally different. This looks totally different than what we were just looking <laughs> at. So... There's more mushrooms. So tell us yes. about the parachute, the parachute yes. shrooms. So Falros Plateau is so big and so high that it actually creates a shelter and sort of like a, an airless or windless pocket below it. And it sort of casts a shadow on this region called the Baron's Throne. And because there's so little wind here, this is actually one of the few places in all of Brightland Steps where something other than grass can grow. And these kind of weird things started to grow up and probably in work together with the roots and they sort of blow themselves up with gas that's coming out of these roots. As you also notice in a lot of the other uh, concept art, you see these bubbles everywhere, but here you don't. That's weird. Massive visual <laughs> variety. Lots of, lots of uh, if we go back here, lots of um, pink in the previous biome, pink and green. And then we move yep. here in the variety. It's perp, deeper purple and green, sort of a darker look. So it's, I'm it's glad that there's variety greater. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because just having just a purely happy region, if you will, that has the same look, we get very samey and tiresome. So I love that there's a darker, more brooding uh, um, yes. part of this region. Um, I, I'm very happy about that. Here's the throne you were talking about a moment ago, Baron's Throne. Yes, the, uh, Baron's Throne is the name of the region, and that's the name of the... Uh, Baron's Throne is also the name of the asset, basically. And there's this odd piece of land that's being held up by these yeah, a lot more roots uh, than most of the other parts. And it sort of naturally formed this weird structure that they called the Baron's Throne. And you can actually try and get up there, but you'll have to find a way to get up there. It's not going to be as easy. But it's probably going to be something cool up there, you know? So hint 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 um, might be worth to try <laughs> yeah so first one to parkour up there record it and uh tweet it at us uh, i'm sure you'll find something interesting maybe we're not making any promises and then here's the mausoleum an interesting name because of the fossils and and then you mentioned yes. the bubbles earlier so the bubbles are just out in this sort of more open space within brightland steps um yes and those do not exist in the same area as where the parachute shrooms are so yeah the mausoleum, tell us about why it's called the mausoleum. Well, if you look really closely, you see an actual gigantic skeleton grown over. If you, <laughs> you can see it in the middle of the screen, there's like a rib cage. And then all the way at the end, there's a. Oh, there's yeah, I do skull. see it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right over here. So it's obviously yes. kind of blending in. It's right here. Here's yes. the skull. Here's the rib cage. And then it looks like some life is growing out of the vertebrae of the uh, of the spine exactly. of, the, of the fossils. Wow, I didn't even see it on my first look. Uh, that's so well integrated into the art. But yeah, obviously, thanks. if you get closer, you'll in in the actual oh, yeah. overworld, you'll be you'll able notice. to maybe even go inside that rib cage or and, and what have you. There's uh, actually a very very cool way of how you can actually travel into this region if you're in the Baron's Room. Because if you're looking at like if you're standing right now to the lower left of that head, that's mm -hmm. where almost into the clouds, that's where the Baron's throne is. Uh, so if you want to make it into the mausoleum, you can using the Baron's throne. And you actually have to sort of like travel into the skeletons to get into this area. Got it. 
There it is, everybody. I zoomed in. You <laughs> spotted the fossils in this picture. Congratulations. You get some points. And here is an entrance to yet another kind of subregion within this region. Yes, the Axelon is uh, it's called the Axelon Forest, which is also a place that have a lot of these um, rock trees, as we sort of try to call them. And the Axelon Forest is basically an area with a lot more of these uh, trees, which sort of make an almost sometimes pitch black environment underneath all of these. And if you go a little bit further with the next slide, then you sort of get a shot from what's it like to be standing in there. Got Below it. it, you stand here and then you behold what you're talking about. Yes, talking and there's about. all these things sort of like topping over you and taking away the light sometimes. Maybe they move a little, I don't know. And there's this uh, water coming down and some clouds rolling in, covering up some, some visuals sometimes. And you also, of course, are able to get on top of it. And I think in the next slide, you'll see what it's like if you're Oh, above. wow. There's the forest yeah. roof. Got it. And for scale, of course, we have a, a, hum, a, uh, a, human a humanoid scale. here. Just yeah. to let you know, the scale of this is absolutely insane. Yep. So Pretty obviously much. from here, you could definitely do some uh, treetop hopping. Uh, I mean, it almost invites you to come in and just, just bounce from here. Just do some parkour and bounce to bounce to bounce on these forest roofs. I mean, <laughs> I might just parkour in there for a few hours. Yeah, um, just for fun. Uh, the, we've, we've designed the movement mechanics to be entertaining. You know, it's cool to just run around and jump and fly and stuff like that. That's Very one of the cool. reasons why all the areas are so big, because you can get so high and so far with these. So got it. That totally makes sense. Guys, that was it. For, that was only two out of the seven <laughs> regions we're going to be going. Isn't this crazy? Crimson <laughs> yes. Waste is next up. I mean, seriously, do you see how deep? These regions are you aren't just going in this isn't like just mario here where you're going into the snow area and it snows for a while okay these regions are very very different they are deep and they have multiple looks and aspects to each of them uh, that we want to go over crimson waste is probably one of the regions that people have seen the most of so far obviously highly developed here we are on the Iluvidex. once again reminder these are all placeholder numbers this is a pre-launch Iluvidex. but if we bring up crimson waste it's going to zoom us in here on the Iluvidex map if you're looking for land. This is where Crimson Waste is relative to the other regions. In a nutshell, what is Crimson Waste? Well, as you can see, it's clearly in the center. And um, it's a gigantic Chris, uh, crimson, so red desert. It's very hot and it's very unpleasant to be on the surface. There's a gigant, also an enormous almost storm constantly above it. And there's like a, an eye of the storm is right above the middle where the uh, obelisk actually is. Very cool. Let's just get straight into the concept art because it is to say that it, it has variety. I think there's maybe the most variety here out of all of the concept art, in my opinion. Uh, so let's go. Let's just get into it. There's that dry, dry crimson waste. But this is a very early concept art. And I'm curious to know as we go through this, how did it evolve? Um, well, there was this. This is indeed very, very early. This is my work. Um, this was one of the earliest pictures that we started when we started ideating the regions. And uh, some of the ideas that we sort of explored here actually made it through uh, eventually still being in the game, like those uh, things that he's looking at. The, uh, how do you call them? On the wall? They're like the cave drawings on the wall. The cave drawings, yeah, exactly. Very cool. You, so this is you, this is what we're referring to here: cave drawings. Here, that's what yeah. the light is pointing toward. We don't want to say too much about what they are exactly because we want players to discover that. But let's go to the uh, next area. Yeah, this is still very much more of the of the red desert, the lifeless red desert desert that's uh, on the on the surface of the crimson waste, and you'll find that. Um, <clears throat> The in the middle of the crimson ways, there's like this rock formation. I think that's on the next slide, and underneath there, uh, yeah, this is still a cinder. That's what it's called. The surface of the crimson ways. There's very little life there. It's basically just all blasted and 
gives you a bit of a fallout look. There's this constant sandstorm going around, so it makes it very hard to traverse everywhere. There's sand in your eyes, and just you know, you have to sort of see silhouettes through the sandstorm. That's where you can travel to, and otherwise you just get lost, basically. Got it. Hostile to all life. Yes, uh, but absolutely. there's these cracks in the in the surface. Well, we'll go we'll take a look at the cracks. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. So some of these cracks in the surface actually sort of gives you shelter. And if you go in there, that's where you actually find the life and the whole variety of the, all that stuff that grew grows in this biome. Um, and in the center of the region where the obelisk is, that's sort of like this main hub where all the tunnels come together, basically. Interesting. And is this the rock formation you were talking about earlier? No, this is a yes. separate area. Oh, this is. The no, rock. yeah. Yeah. This was uh, also a very early concept art of the the dome, basically, that's above the obelisk. The center part is called Ulum's Landing. That's where the uh, obelisk is situated. Got it. So lifeless. Uh, yes. And it's uh, so <laughs> brutal and, and, and so different than Brightland Steps, which is lush, teeming with light, happy forest jumping in parkour. This I feel like you'd die in the first 24 hours, guaranteed. Agony and pain. Yes. <laughs> right. And here's the obelisk. Yeah. And that's also the sort of like the, the large contrast with the outside is like when you when you're around here and you have shelter from the storm, there's there's you're deep underground, so the heat doesn't really get to it. Uh, there's some water or acid actually. Uh, but there's there's liquids, you know, and that's where all this life sort of starts to find their their place basically got it so lots of visual variety this isn't like Tatooine in star wars where it's just a desert everywhere you've got life underneath uh yes. which will uh obviously keep things fresh and interesting as you go discover these areas that are full of life southern passage yeah this is one of the biggest tunnels um leading from ulum's landing leading from the obelisk and it's very wide and open, so there's still some light and sand falling down, and there's some some acid and stuff uh, sort of like forming a river down towards uh, eventually an exit into Cinder. And um, one of the reasons uh, why all these tunnels are here is probably just like the uh, Traveler's Gorge, where I sort of cut through uh, heading towards the obelisk. And that's sort of like probably one of the main reasons why these tunnels are also heading there. Got it. And wow, this is so different than everything we saw before in Crimson Waste. Lots of yeah. water here. And um, it's this looking is like, also hmm. a very, <laughs> a very old piece of concept art that I think was done by Vincent. Um, and we were just exploring the variety and then seeing like, how can we make all of these tunnels different, you know, because if you're going to be in this region, um, we kind of want to give you an, a different experience in every direction that you go. Everything has, every tunnel has their own character, you know, and, and Southern Passage is the most calm and welcoming one. It's, it's wide, it's open, it's fairly flat. It, it's not too difficult. And, uh, it's just, uh, a nice place to be basically. Um, definitely, um, an oasis, uh, from the brutal outsides. And wow, and then a totally different color palette here. Not totally different, but very different. Obviously, lots of reds, lots of purples and pinks here in this area. Lots of plant life underground, able to survive in the moisture. Exactly, yeah. Very cool. I'm loving this. And uh, here's the end of the passage. And now we have these beautiful flower-looking plants as we end the southern passage. It looks like we're making a transition into a new area. This is, I think this is like the, the exit right where you go out of the tunnel system and you would actually get back into the, into the open place, into cinder. And this is like the last few bits of sheltered rock and the sun is out. So you can, you know, the flowers can, enormous flowers, of course, <laughs> you can try to catch some uh, sun rays and, and grow there nicely. Very cool. Of course, every, yeah, not everything, but... A lot of things are big in Alluvium <laughs> to give yes. you that big scale. And here's something completely different. Crimson Waste, in my opinion, has the most variety right now visually. There's so much going on here. So yeah, crazy exactly. pinky purple crystals here in this cave. Crystal Cave, what's up with this? Yes. So 
as I, as I mentioned, there's uh, several tunnels leading from Ulam's Landing, which is where the obelisk is. And one of the one of the tunnels is actually a gigantic crystal cave with some drops. And uh, yeah, it's it's absolutely beautiful when you go in there. Uh, the sound team is also going to do some amazing stuff where you hear the the rocks coming from the surface resonating with the crystals when they hit it, like pew 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 pew. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, and when you go through this tunnel, there's quite a lot of jumping and stuff like that to make it across. And you end up in Anguith, which is, uh, I think, in the next slide, which is uh, uh, a boneyard. And this yeah. is a lot. This is also sheltered space. So there's like walls coming over it. So it allows life to grow there. But it's already a lot more uh, extreme, basically. Very dry, obviously not a welcoming space here. Interesting to go from the crystal space into this totally different color palette in this dry graveyard. Yes, it's not completely dry. There's um, some like plant the, life, yeah. Yeah, and the, there's uh, quite a lot of acid in here as mm. well. You'll see that in the next image, I think. Oh, yeah, the, okay, that is a lot of acid, yeah. <laughs> that, will, that looks like it'll kill you, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's slowly dissolving stuff that falls into it. Um, I see. It, but this Here, also here's the idea of scale, too. This isn't just like a oh, teeny yeah. puddle, guys. Here's the ranger, and then this is a giant pool of acid that you're going to have to traverse across and figure out, hey, maybe those bones poking out there out of the I acid would be helpful. Mm -hmm. It's a wall painting. <laughs> ah, yes, I'm seeing those everywhere in this region. Interesting. Okay. Those will be interesting for discovery, maybe yeah. understanding some things about the lore, maybe? Probably, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yep, we're going to be keep being cagey <laughs> about some, it. Maybe <laughs> someone should know. Someone so. should know, perfect. Yeah, but this, <laughs> I love it. The acid here is just going to add variety. And obviously, with that constant danger on the ground level here in this area, you'll need to be traversing over that. And I love, I love the feeling of, um, you know, the floor is lava, the floor is acid here, and you need to avoid that drop, making the parkour elements of going around the overworld that much more interesting. Yes. There's another one of those iconic entrances that pulls you in and sucks you in. Where are we going here? Exactly. This is uh, the tunnel towards uh, Soka's garden. Um, and this is yeah, basically hidden behind a, a giant sandfall that's coming in from the surface. And mm. you have to sort of, like try and make your way through it so you can uh, head towards Soka's garden. So you've heard of waterfalls. How about sand falls? Here it is. <laughs> the sand is always falling. Now, don't ask us how the physics work on having infinity yeah. sand, but it, it's, it's working. It's, it's happening. Maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> we won't say anything more. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and then as we, this is actually, this is Soka's garden. This is the exit from the tunnel. You end up a bit higher above the ground and you sort mm -hmm. of get this beautiful over, yeah. Um, vantage point over the whole garden. And there's like this massive, it's called the Soka's Rose that you see in the middle. And it's a very weird kind of thing. And players will eventually try and find out and see how it works. And there's some stuff with it. So, Got it. We don't want to say too much about it. You'll need to discover the mysteries of this area. But just Crimson Waste never ceases to surprise me with all of the different looks here. I feel like you get five regions versus a worth of uh, variety within one in Crimson Waste. And of course... Um, folks out there in the community have already seen uh, the Electrified Giant. I love this name. I want to say it two times. Electrified Giant Luminescent Hazelnut. Yes. Electrified Giant Luminescent <laughs> Hazelnut. What, tell me about this. How did this get created and where are we? Um, yeah, so this is Magno Pass. That's uh, another tunnel that you travel into. Um, and the idea was that every plant somehow in this region is electrified. So everything is shocking and uh, sparking as you go. Why that exactly is happening might be something with the, the energy that the obelisk leaves behind when people are traveling to it, or maybe there's something in the core or, you know, it's not entirely sure, but I'm sure eventually we'll find out what's going on there. Um, and the craziest thing actually is, is that if you go to the next um, image, this this shot it was uh, i think alexis made this and it was absolutely super cool right it was like holy beep this is amazing 
let's let's try and build this into the game. And then eventually, at some point, I think Emil and Vanya were environment artists. Dimitri, Grant, of course, worked on it. And at some point, like literally, this image can be replicated in game. So you can actually walk here and get the same feeling and impact of this image inside of the engine. It's This does not look like a safe place to be. I'm just saying there's acid on the bottom. There's electrified giant electrified giant hazelnut almost identical. It's this looks like everything's going to kill you or damage you in here, but it's beautiful. it's like terrifyingly beautiful death in this in this uh Magno Pass uh, with pools of bubbling acid. I love it. So cool. And then here is one of those transitions back to Cinder, the outside red desert. Yes, the very hot red desert. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. The sand's kind of coming, dripping down through the uh, sky, the sort of uh, sky view here with life right on the edge trying to capture that sunlight. I love it. Guys, that was just one region, Crimson Waste. So as you can see, when these regions become fully developed, you get a lot out of those regions, which is uh, totally incredible. And the next one that we're going to be talking about, we just have a little bit of a sneak preview to show everyone today, which is going to be Crystal um, Shores. Shores. Yeah. yeah. And so let's pull this up here on the Aluva decks. And in a nutshell, what is Crystal Shores and what makes it unique? Yeah, it's... Um... It's it's one of the weirdest regions of all of them that we're creating. Um, it also looks completely different than anything else. Um, and I'm not sure how much I can or am allowed or want to give away for it. Um, well, don't don't give away a bunch now. We can always give away more later. So it's fine yeah. if you just want to say a little bit. Okay, well, there's um, basically crystals save... Or when, when things get stuck in time they crystallize and i think that's that's all okay that's all we're going to say about that and once again with the aluvidex all the numbers you see on the screen are all placeholder numbers i'm just showing you how if you want to explore in the aluvidex when you get access to it crystal shores you can just go up here in the menu click crystal shores and then it'll bring you to that area but we've got some some just a tiny bit of concept art that we can share today on this and then um, we can move uh, to some of some of the other regions that we have a little bit more to share. Yes. So here we are, Crystal Shores, Obelisk. I mean, who likes pink and purple? Are those your favorite colors? Me, actually, my favorite colors on the screen. So this is actually my number one region I'm I'm looking for <laughs> as a land <laughs> yeah. as a landowner. So tell me about this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of concept art. Um. Yeah, I'm. I, it's it's standing on Summer Crest. That's that's the hill. That's a not a very big hill, but it's a, it's a hill. And from it's also again in the middle of the region. And from here, there's all kinds of options you can go and explore. Um, the whole region is sort of it's the description is done, the thumbnail sketches, re references, everything is done. But we're we're still very much sort of visual, vis, vis, visual developing the whole region. And Got it. So, so let's not go into too much detail about it. Let's just give a sneak preview. Then that's fine. That's not a problem. Yeah. Um, and I mean, just to just to give people a taste, take a look at this gigantic sand dune of pink gorgeousness. This is yes. incredible. Yes. <laughs> that, yes, it is. Everybody, it's, take a look. Let me, let me <laughs> zoom in on this. Do you guys see this? Can you imagine actually traversing this area? Look at the scale there. You see the tiny little ranger down there? Imagine traversing this area. Have you ever been in an area in a video game that looks like this? I don't think so. No, maybe in a dream. And, maybe in uh, a dream, yeah. When you eventually find out like where you are, what this place is, and why it looks like it, the way that it looks. Look at these crystal pretty, structures, man. Look at this. Look at this. That's ridiculous. So it's going to be man. very hard <laughs> to, to do that, but uh, I'm, Grand is finding a way, 100%. He's of committed. course he is. That man has the solutions. And here we are at Spectral, Spectral Peak. I know we're not saying too much. Spectral Peak is the thing in the sky. I see. This up here. Got it. Yes. And somehow that just sits there. And it plays a huge role in the region and how you can actually move across and do things. And it's going to be pretty cool. 
We're not saying too much, guys. Just a sneak peek on that one. That's it. That's it for yes. Crystal Shores, everybody. I wish we had more. We'll come back with more later. The next is Halcyon Sea, which we do have a bit more to show on Halcyon Sea. And um, once again, let's go ahead and pull up the Iluvidex so we can get a sense of where this is at in the world map. And while I do that, what is Halcyon Sea and why, and, and in what ways it is, is it unique versus other regions in Alluvium? Well, Halcyon Sea is uh, like a giant um, landlocked area, and it's like a, a coral reef kind of, um, yeah, place that's that's above the land basically. Um, it has some like very weird kind of features to it, um, and it's mostly just very. It's got to feel very tropical and chill and surfs up, dude, kind of vibes basically. Surfs up dude vibes. There it yes. is. And so anybody who's checking out the Aluvidex, you, you can go dive into Halcyon Sea, go check out the different land plots as you see fit. Once again, as ever, all of these numbers are placeholders in the Aluvidex. This is a pre-launch version of the Aluvidex, just giving you a sneak preview on that. But enough about the Aluvidex. Let's go look at the concept art, which is going to let you know what Halcyon Sea is going to look like on the ground level. So let's just get straight into this which is very different than all the other regions we showed you a moment ago. Surf, yes. up, dude, and chill galore. What are we looking at? This is um, a concept piece for the obelisk area, which is called the Takifugus Dome. And I, if, if you're watching this, uh, write down Takifugu, and then maybe at some point Google that, and then you'll find something very cool because it's actually named after the, one of the greatest artists of the animal kingdom, which is the Japanese puffer fish. And they create this very intricate sand pattern. Um, and we try to mimic that into the game as a homage, basically. So that's a cool, that's a cool tidbit. That's really, really interesting. Yeah. And here's another angle on the dome obelisk. Yeah. And um, something odd you see is the, the giant structures trying to sort of grow over the obelisk. Mm. And it's somehow failing to do that. And there's something with the obelisk, the energy that is sort of like apparently has that's allowing it to not be grown over. And that's all we're going to say about that. Go discover it on your own players when you get in the game. <laughs> and here's exactly. you know, Halcyon Falls. I mean, to yes. me, this, this reminds me, this is like for me, like just a, a classic like fantasy concept art right here. You're like, I feel like you're on the edge of a coral reef leading into a fantasy world. This is nuts. Tell me about this. Yeah, so what we're looking at is um, the Bifun stairs. Um, it's like these, all of these pools laid up. Uh, in the game, it, there, it's actually going to be even bigger than this. And in the background, you see the water coming down from the Halcyon Falls, which is a giant uh, waterfall. And if you go to the next um, image, you'll see that you're sort of made it atop and you see all of these colored pools in the foreground. And there's like this giant um, deep lake almost uh, at below the waterfall, which is the, called the overflow pond. Um, and there's, yes, yeah, some people say there's stuff in there, but, or something lives in there. You know? Go jump in there, players. Maybe you'll die. Maybe you'll live. Maybe you won't. You'll find out when you discover it. <laughs> <laughs> perfect yeah exactly yeah and just a reminder we're being cagey about details because we want you gamers we want you players to go discover the overflowing pool and we want you to find out what mysteries may or may not be in there and i i assume this is what you're referring to with the deep portion here yes yeah there's something maybe you know. there might be something in there write that down when you get in the game go check that out and let us know if you find something perfect exactly and then here's a, another shot of the waterfall. God, look at the scale on this, man. Look how tiny the ranger is down here yep. versus this waterfall. This is just, gosh, like this is like 5x the scale that you normally see in video games for 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 uh, features and landmarks yeah. like this. We we have a lot of that in 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 alluvium. You know, I mean, if you're if you're looking at this, you go like, wow, she's tiny. But as soon as you sort of get into the eye level. Um, and you're actually looking, playing the game, then mm -hmm. you get the same effect going like, holy, this is big. 
And uh, yeah, that's it's really cool that we're especially achieving that in a lot of these early works that we're doing inside of the engine in blockouts. There's the feelings that we sometimes get when we see these concept arts. We're actually achieving that most of the time in the uh, actual game as well. So that's really cool. It's cool. It's cool to know that the community gets inspired when we release this sort of stuff and they're like, it's, they're inspired to want yeah. to be involved and to engage. But on another side, it inspires the internal team to create oh, yeah. and to want to work harder to achieve this vision because we all want to be able to explore this and really be in this moment we see in yes, this image. Exactly. And that is really motivating. Yeah, that's that's a large part of why uh, why we make this kind of stuff and also the the direction we go with most of our stuff, you know, where we sort of try to wow, holy, that's big and holy, that's colorful or far away or high up. Uh, we want to have that wow effect with everything, basically. That emotional moment. Yep, yep. And th those are the things that stick with you, that feeling you had when you experienced XYZ in a video game. That's yes. what sticks with you. The logic, the strategy, the details, they rarely stay, but the feeling mm -hmm. stays forever. Uh, so exactly. that's that's a really good point. Oh, wow. I feel like we're in like a coral reef, but it's outdoors here. I, I, yep. <laughs> I, I started scuba diving when I was 13, and I feel like I'm underwater, but we're not. So tell We're us not. about this area, Whaleback Ridge. Yeah, so on the border edge of, uh, of Halcyon Sea, of the whole region, basically, it's sort of like boarded up against the sea. Um, and this is the Whaleback Ridge, which has all these stromatolites. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with those, but they're the oldest living organisms on our planet. Um, and they have similar kind of things on alluvium. Mm. that um, grow into these impressive structures with corals hanging out of them. And they actually sort of release some water and stuff as well. So we get that lively feeling of things moving and being around you when you're actually on there running around trying to look for alluvials. Awesome. So, so much of what's in alluvium is inspired by nature. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. And, uh, but then is obviously twisted or uh, fantasized, if you will, or turned into a fantasy version or a more w out there, wild, mixed up, remixed version of different nature elements put into one. But it's all based in, let's call it reality in some way or oh, another. Yeah. yeah, for a lot of these things, uh, I'm kind of a nature freak myself, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I really like fish and animals and stuff like that. So for most of these, uh, well, not mostly, but a lot of the, things we come up with, I can actually sort of have a whole idea of how this works and why it's in the environment and how it's functioning and stuff like that. It's kind of nerd out over that sometimes. Yeah, well, everybody watching is nerding out over it as well. And they'll probably nerd out over this as well. Look at these yes. beautiful waterfalls. <laughs> and I mean, come on, this is actually going to be in the game. Tell me about this. Yeah, we're gonna try and uh, do our best to get this one to one <laughs> in the game. It's got it's it's very difficult, you know. We're we're mm -hmm. working with hundreds of different assets. They all have to be, you know, you all have to be able to step on them, and you have to fly over them and climb on them and stuff like that. So it's it's a big challenge, but um, we have the people who can actually make it work. So that's that's pretty amazing. Um, and I think asset wise, this this. Uh, this image you have in front of you is uh, mm -hmm. where we're pretty much sort of building all of these things now. We actually you, like right this it. minute. Got it. You're building and by assets, assets, you mean the uh, plans, all of what you see. The, yeah. We got to yeah. sort of take those out. We got to create concept sheets for them and then mm -hmm. they have to go to modeling and then to texturing and maybe sometimes grooming because there's like hair kind of stuff on these. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually they will have sounds and they'll maybe sometimes have animations and, you know, they have some tech because there's water coming. So we have to have be treated by a tech artist and eventually be placed in the environment by an environment artist. And like I said, there's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's like a piece of art built by 200 artists. That's uh so cool. And it's so cool to see Halcyon Sea looking like this versus Cinder we just saw in Crimson oh, Waste, yeah. the driest bone dry red desert you've ever seen. 
and then this lush, like you're basically underwater, but not here in the Halcyon Sea. I love exactly. the variety. I like people are going to want to traverse and explore all of these regions um, just to mix things up and to keep it interesting. And yeah. here's the Indigo Crypt entrance. Once again, classic design here where like literally the formations on the entrance are like almost like pointing like in here, in yeah. here, go yeah. in. So tell if us you, about this. <laughs> well, she's about to go in if you if you look closely. Right. Oh, yeah. I didn't <laughs> even see that. There's the ranger. Look at the scale on that. See that teensy, tiny ranger over there? This is a pretty yeah. big entrance. This is it's, interesting. It's like an enormous shell structure that's sort of built into the or grown into a mountain almost. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of as soon as you get in there, um, you'll notice that you're inside of, inside of a shell. And then at some point, you're sort of like inside of a living stone. Um, so the, the wall texture go from shell material eventually to sort of flesh material. And if there's all of these gill kind of things flapping around and it becomes wet and moist. And I probably, if you're in there, it's probably going to start to stink. Mm. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's uh, and there's like a whole system underground inside of the structure that you can explore. So that's kind of cool. That is very cool. And speaking of which, we're going exactly. in right now. Wow, yes. Look at the coloring on this. Uh, so the color transition from the outside to the inside. Yeah, and it does feel like you're in something that's almost alive here. Like it looks like almost like an esophagus to me <laughs> as you're going inside this space. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, but no, tell us right. about what we're going into here. I mean, you, you mentioned there's a shell on the outside. I don't know if you want to tell us exactly what this is, but no. this is wild. Yes. Like I say, you, you get more and more uh, the feeling that you're inside of something that's alive. That's basically, mm -hmm. and, and if it really is, or if it's just the plants and the materials giving you that sense, maybe, but you know, we'll never know. Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to find out gamers. And here yes. we go. This is a V2, if you will, of Inside the Crypt. So obviously being refined a bit. And wow, look at this ultra cool bioluminescent -y blue water here. Really, yeah. really interesting. Almost like a Gatorade or something. <laughs> yeah, or Gatorade or Powerade where you're like, should I drink this? Uh, by <laughs> the way, I don't recommend you drink anything in alluvium. Um, no. It'll probably kill you. This, yes. to, this as well. So <laughs> this is really interesting. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this, like the whole system inside of the indigo crypt is uh there's like tunnels and things you can climb on and you know go a different route or go the other way and you have to you know you can sort of like explore inside of this thing whatever it might be which we're not going to say got it and then oh wow things turn a bit purple and uh pango what, what are we talking about here yeah, so at some point um, there is this space and it's called Pango, which I think is uh, black in Mahori, the New Zealand uh, language. Mm, okay, I, I could be wrong, but I think that that's I, I came up with the name. I think I, that's what it was. Um, but yeah, there's like this sinkhole into the into forever blackness, basically. Mm. And there's crystals uh, on the side of the wall, so you can sort of try and traverse down a little bit. But at some point, the, even the crystals disappear, and it's just black underneath you. So it's abyss-like. Uh, so yeah. this is, I assume, us traversing deeper in with the light shining down, and this kind of gives us an idea of the depth of yeah. this. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And it becomes getting slippery and there's algae like mm. stuff growing over it. And at some point you just feel like, you know, you don't want to slip and disappear forever. So. I love the dan I love the danger, the feeling of danger <laughs> uh, in, in any area you're trying to traverse. It'll add difficulty and it'll kind of keep you on the edge of your seat and keep you interested as yes. you're trying to move about. Uh, so yeah. uh, I hope that there are some resources of some type cram down here so we have to traverse through the slippery abyss to get to the bottom and then here we are in a different area exiting indigo crypt yeah so there's uh there's probably going to be a few ways of how you can exit this uh, this this tunnel system and one of them is on the north uh, it says north but i think it's on the south side of the of the map uh which sort of leads you into the sea of ancients is what it's called um and 
I think that's in the next slide where you start to sort of get a feeling for the Sea of Ancients, where basically ancient coral structures have started to grow into a wild forest of all kinds of beautiful, colorful, gigantic and smaller and salt, you know, creating sort of uh, salt and sand dunes and the water is getting tinted red at the edges, as you can see. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very, very cool place. You know, you have some water dripping down around you and there's, you, know, you probably hear some stuff and there's the red tent moving. he's referring to on the edge there. Just zooming in on that. That's interesting. I love the I love the um, contrast between that red and then the color of the water too. It's really beautiful. Yeah, and if you can see, it's even on her, you know, where she stands. So there's, oh, there's around her legs, whatever that red is, we which we are not going to say. That's on hers, <laughs> or uh, it's on our ranger as well. So uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. We won't want to say too much there and ruin what that may be. And this is just another sh God. Look at the scale once again, friends. You're just this tiny ranger <laughs> out here in this wide, wide world. Have you seen? Have you ever seen coral like this? Come on, <laughs> that's nuts. Uh, what a, what I know a beautiful it's giving, scale here. I know it's giving Mark a massive headache. So I'm sorry, Mark. Mark is our lead environment artist, and he hates us for building these. So got it. Yeah, got it. It's like Mark, you're good at building things, right? Cool. Make it <laughs> make it way bigger, please. Yes. No, it's not big enough. It's supersize it. Um, yeah. That's so cool. That is what we have to show for Halcyon C for now. Moving on to Shard Bluff, Shard Bluff Labyrinth. We only have what two regions left, and we are all done here. So, yeah. Um, thank you so much, Roger, for for giving us your time here on this. And as ever, I want to make sure that everyone can see uh, within the context of the Aluvidex where. This next region is relative to the other regions. Everything you see in the Luvidex is a placeholder number, and this is a work in progress. But tell us about um, Shard Bluff. Yeah, so Shard Bluff is, um, at least in the game, one of the darkest regions. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really rocky, and there's a lot of um, orange fungi kind of stuff going around that's that's trying to form the region and it i think the whole region itself is sort of shaped as if something blasted in it so everything is sort of moved into one direction into up a hill creating this one enormous peak it's the highest peak of all of uh alluvium um, ah okay so it's the yeah. mount everest of alluvium if you will is what kind of what we're kind of looking at right here pretty much yeah but probably bigger because in Alluvium we do things oh, yeah. bigger. <laughs> Mount Everest. <laughs> so if you want to check nothing. this out on the Alluvidex when you get access, you just pull down the menu and pull up Shard Bluff, and then you'll be able to go look at all the land in there. Um, but it, it's 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 so much easier to see what we're talking about if we actually just go take a look at that concept art. And if you guys are just joining us right now, we're with Roger, lead concept artist of Alluvium, obviously working with a team of talented people as well to create a lot of what you're seeing today. Let's bring up some of the Shard Bluff, Bluff Labyrinth art. And here we go. Yet another part of the Alluvium color spectrum. We have yet to see <laughs> yellow in, in the previous regions that we've reviewed today. Now we're seeing some prominent yellowish, orangish color. Uh, so once again, more visual variety. What are we looking oh, yeah. at here? Well, we're at Nulls Point. Um, like if, if we're looking from the player's perspective, like right behind us is basically the obelisk. And Nulls Point is sort of like this flat, sandy area. And there's like cracks in the ground where that filled up with water. Um, and got we're it. looking into like a wall of basically stone shards that got shut up from the ground and sort of like pushed backwards. So everything is sort of like tilted into a certain direction towards the highest peak, which is called the panoramic, which we'll get to in the, I think the next slides. Um, here it is. This is the climb to the panoramic. So yeah. where is the panoramic in the shot? It's all the way in the back. And um, got I it. Think in, so back here you're referring to this is the panoramic back here. I think it's actually missing in the shot. <laughs> okay. No, so this is the climb on the way there. So we can't see it's it on, yet. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> it's pretty cool. This whole region. The idea for this is that um, there's this fungus that's growing everywhere and some of these shards are of stone shards are sort of tilted in directions that don't really make too much sense. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the, the explorers think that might have to do with this fungi actually sort of holding these things together. Um, so you get all these crazy shapes that are actually still, you know, almost defying physics that they're still standing, but it's probably because a certain type of fungi sort of took hold of the whole shard and sort of like crammed it and keeps it in place. Players will have to explore and find out for themselves. And ah, oh, yeah. here yeah, we go. This, it looks like this, now, the, now we're heading toward a panoramic. Yes. Tell me about it. Well, yeah, this is, this is the, the daring climb up to the highest peak of Illuvium. It's, it's also, it's almost only just like one area of, uh, of shard bluff, but it's, it's a very rewarding climb to make it all the way up there and look out over the world, basically. Unlike Everest, you'll have, uh, you know, triple jumps and, uh, some oh, yeah. extra technology that can help you make it up there. So you probably won't have to camp on the way up. Yeah. Wow. Look at the just swirling clouds. It just looks so forbidding, um, sort of foreboding maybe is the word I'm looking for, but uh, it just looks like uh, it's so ominous and also, like you're mentioning, would be so rewarding to make it across all of this to reach the top. To reach the top, indeed. And something that's also a pretty funny fact about the, the um, a lot of these sort of fungus-like thingies, Mm-hmm. Is most you're of referring are... to these yellow fungus here is that what you're referring to yeah more like the mm-hmm. root rooty systems underneath and sometimes mm-hmm. that are sort okay. of engulfing around pillars they're okay, sort of got it. allergic got it. to light um mm, okay so they usually crawl away in places where there's no light interesting okay write that down yeah. gamers you might need to go explore something maybe roger's trying to hint at something there <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right and then here's <laughs> west of Knoll's point where we find hull felt so yes tell me about this yeah this is a pretty weird area there's like these uh groups of pillars that sort of form together um and they're sort of like uh all tilting towards one another so there's something in between of them that's sort of doing that um that's mm. probably why there's the light coming out of it as well. And the funny thing is with the Oh, so ground, the light you're referring to is right here, this bluish uh kind of indigoish light is what yeah. you're referring to. Okay. Yeah. And the funny thing about basically the whole area around these is that they are uh are filled with blood moss, is what they're called. And it's like this tiny capsule. Blood moth? Moss. Moss. A blood moss. moss. Got moss. it. Okay. Yes. And there's like these tiny capsules that as soon as you step on them, they sort of release uh, a gas. So you got to try and make you find your way around to actually make it across without stepping on one of those sort of like mines. Got it. So I'm going to put this in my top five areas in Alluvium that will kill you list. This one's <laughs> going to go up toward the top, I think. Maybe, um, yeah. It's beautiful. Maybe. Uh, it's beautiful and uh, also dangers lurk around every corner. And wow, here's some variety for you. I mean, this is kind of reminding me a little bit of Halcyon Sea, these a uh, little bit in the color yeah. palette and what we're experiencing here. Tell me about these pillars. This is uh, when you're actually inside of one of those groups. Um, the reason why the light is like this is because if you would go a little bit further, you would find out. But I thought that it wouldn't be right to already show that to people. So Got it. So we'll let know. folks discover what's through the blue mist here and deeper inside. Yeah. You you can look at her going like what's 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 there, you know? I want to I want to see what that is. Mm. That's kind of like uh inviting somehow. All right, people got to play the game to go in there and find <laughs> out Shard Bluff <laughs> La Bluff Labyrinth. We aren't going to give you the answers on where this labyrinth leads. You need to find them yourself. And here's closed moon gate entrance to I what's the pronunciation of this? It's Hider. 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 Perfect. Yes. Back yeah. to that yellow color palette. What are we looking at? Well, this is uh, basically the pillars or a whole bunch of pillars that are collapsed on one another, mm-hmm. which means that they're, yeah, you can't really get through. But as I hinted earlier towards the thing about the light, and this, that might come in play here. We won't say anything more. And then here, ah, here's an above shot. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we looked earlier at bright line steps the traversal opportunities, you know, to parkour around. 
Here we go. Start here. Boing, 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 boing. Look at the, how fun the traversal would be in here. Maybe dangerous too. Yep. But it looks like it's just set up for fun and danger at the same time. Exactly. You know, you don't want to sort of like plan to land on something that all of a sudden, almost when you're there, cross away or deflates or. <laughs> that, would, <laughs> yeah. that would be that, that would, would be bad. Yeah. Then you end up in the magma and then, you know, get started over. <laughs> Look at this magma right here. Liquid hot. Very, very cool. And there's the magma vents referring to earlier. Uh, looking to find deposits down here, of course, but don't fall in the magma. Yeah. Uh, so that. this is really interesting. Exactly. It's uh, very cool. It's a very cool structure. So I did, like props to the to the concept uh, team, to Alexis, to Kendrick, to Vincent, everybody. That they're they're amazing to work with. So there's there's so little I have to do, and it, like they do these amazing things. So it's awesome. I love the multi layered aspect of it. So you could be on the ground level down here, then you could jump to this layer here, and then go up to the higher layer up there. And it looks yeah. like there's going to be a lot of tactical movement that you will have to make in the, within this space, which will keep the variety high as you're grinding this region. Exactly. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And then uh, here's the mobile fields in Spillfelt. Uh, these yes. are wild. What is this? Yeah. So basically this is a different um, fungi type that actually sort of takes a pillar and grows inside of it and eventually sort of cracks it open and they sort of, yeah, trap the sort of gas underneath and they actually start to look into form almost a mushroom kind of thing, but it's actually the sides are stone and they're super weird. Um, and they release a, a gas that's heavier than air, so it falls down. And wow. most of the time when they would, um, for example, when so something light flashes or whatever, it would release that gas because that gas also then covers, blocks light from the stuff that's growing underneath very interesting and then there are cracks and chasms in this area and giving us another angle here yeah so i love that there's i hate i hate the buzzword verticality but also like alluvium has verticality where you can uh, explore upward and you can explore downward so yeah. these chasms down here looks like our ranger is on the precipice here looking down at what may be below yes and you can you can actually go in there um, I wouldn't go maybe into the gas too long, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot to explore there. You know, it's the, the whole area is cracked open and there's tunnels everywhere and it's, it's a pretty cool region to be in. Wild. And there it and is inside. Is God, just take a look at the scale. Once again, friends, there's our teeny tiny ranger back there. And then here's yeah. the area and look. All these little platforms for you to parkour through this area in traverse exactly yep very cool. very cool and then now here we are moving to a new area into the delta within yes. within this uh within shard bluff La labyrinth tell me about this yeah so the idea for this region is that it's a uh, lower than the obelisk um mm -hmm. so from null's point you would actually go down um and this region is sometimes flooded. For example, when a Leviathan comes too close to shore, it breaks the ocean basically and sends a massive wave towards uh, the land. And this area is so low that it would then sort of like get flooded completely, smashed. That's why all the pillars here are smashed and things are broken and these weird clam-like creatures, plants are living here trying to trap things that wash up the shore and there's a whole thing that you can do with these as well so. which we're not going to say what it is but it's almost like uh like the water or the tides that you're talking about coming in destroy but also they provide opportunities for life at the same time which is exactly. fascinating yeah um very very interesting and this is more views of the delta region and i guess yeah. this is post flood i guess we would say yeah this is probably uh yeah right after it happened and the water is sort of like falling between the cracks back to the ocean mm -hmm. and uh, things are left maybe uh if you look sort of like to the up left that's sort of like the, the above there would be the obelisk up above here that cliff, cliff. Mm -hmm. yeah and then 
if you look across, you see like this all these broken kind of things. Mm. Um, and that's the that region is called the Lyra. Uh, I think that's on the next slide. Yeah, and then you see all these crazy broken things, and it's actually a really deep descent from above with all these weird cracked and unstable pillars, uh, which sort of bring you down toward like these uh, flood pools area where you can try and make it across to an island that's right off the shore. So, so for players that like a dark and moody region, um, I think Shard Bluff Labyrinth is going to provide a lot of that dark and mood, dark moodiness with variety. And yeah. uh, I'm really, really digging the darker colors, the darker tones with that nice yellow and orange pop off of that. It really yeah, is we unique. And still it's really want to make it colorful, you know? So it yeah, feels it's alluvium better. It's alluvium. I mean, we have, we're shooting you in freaking lasers in your eyes all the time with colors of that branding. <laughs> so of course we need that there. Um, that's exactly. super interesting. And here's a side view of the island of Zamia. Yes. And um, yeah, you got to try and make it up there um, to actually sort of see what's on the other side. Uh, and yeah, the the path across would be somewhat difficult and to climb up. You can this only climb here up. is what you're referring to. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And um, how you actually get up there will be sort of a, a bit of a mystery and it will be difficult. But um, yeah, on the other side, it's pretty cool. Yep. Once again, we're being cagey. If you're just tuning uh, you can, in, we're we, being cagey on the details. We want you to discover. We actually uh, what, show it, I think, in the next slide. But there's there's mm. some stuff to it. Um, I'm not going to mm. say too much. But just making it across will be, you know, hopefully somewhat difficult. Well, I mean, if you're getting shot with pink lightning, I imagine that would increase <laughs> difficulty. Just saying. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> once again we're just giving you a sneak peek here guys just giving you the flavor and sort of um what's interesting about these regions um as you're kind of starting to ramp up your knowledge of them before you play and get engaged and guys that was it for that region we're about to hit our final region it's yeah. been a marathon session roger it's, you doing uh, okay it's, buddy it's are you hanging in yeah, there with well, me my drink has been gone for a while but uh i'm all right can you do one more region yes last one all right final region Let's go. And this one, as ever, is vastly different than the rest, <laughs> which is so crazy that you guys have been able to pull this off. Here we go into the Aluvidex. Work in progress numbers are not accurate. Just here to show you everything relative to the other um, regions. And uh, help me pronounce this region correctly. Taiga Boreal. It is Taiga Boreal. Perfect. Yes. I'm American. You know, Americans are terrible at pronunciations. Taiga Boreal. What is unique about this region? And here it is relative to the other regions on the map. It's uh, completely in ice. That's 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 the the main feature about this is that it's very high up and it's all covered in ice and snow. And uh, there's a giant lake that's frozen over and cracked open. And there's things below the lake. And it's and there's a lot of cool stuff going on. But the biggest thing I can tell you uh i guess about the region right now is that that we're building it as we speak and the block out even without basically anything there is pretty wow already so it's okay. very promising let's go take a look at the concept art so everybody can get an idea of what we're talking about and then everyone will have a good understanding of what the regions look like what they feel like and just have a basic understanding of what we're dealing with here and guys None of the regions look like this. We are in an icy snow uh, yes. environment. Tell me about it. Well, this is um, a lookout. This is like the hero image for the for the for the whole region. We're at the south side, I think, on the southern wall of the region, looking back to the obelisk, and um, I think it's called. The, the observatory, fall. right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. The observatory, and then the fall is the thousand meter high waterfall coming down. Only um, one thousand. I've had better. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe before we we release, we size it up a little. I don't know. Yeah, a thousand. Come on, give me a break here. It's and look at the uh, look at the obsidian colored ice sheets uh, yeah. to provide some more visual variety. 
yeah, there's this there's this really cool phenomena um, also just in in on Earth where we you sometimes get this uh, sunlight that comes from the right direction and it sort of illuminates the ice and it turns it really blue, especially when there's like a a layer of snow on top of it and it's mm-hmm. super beautiful and gonna try and get that kind of feeling with a lot of the ice here as well, which is just gonna look amazing. It's not just going to be a generic snow world here, guys. You're going to see a lot of really interesting things. And here it is. The promise is 1,000 meters high. So gamers are now going to measure every meter to make sure we deliver <laughs> at launch. Yeah. Uh, every meter of this. Or, I worry. <laughs> so look at that fall. That's incredible. The question, where does that water even come from? What do we need to know about this? Um, well, I, I can tell you that, but... Don't, don't, don't. I'm just, it's, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm, it's all, it's all frozen. And, um, it's frozen. Okay. Okay. It's basically frozen. There is probably some sort of a stream still going underneath. So we hear things crack and move as we go down and there's some, you know, there's some cool features about the, uh, about the waterfall. If you, when you're making your jump down, basically. So, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's sort of an Aurora Borealis like effect. It appears in the sky in this, in this region as well. Yeah, because we're so high up to the mm. to the stratosphere, basically, we're gonna see a lot of cool light shows coming by. I'm fine, totally fine with that. Once again, adding so. visual variety and pop of color against that white of the snow environment. Yeah, we we really want the uh, the world to feel alive in every aspect of the way. You know, whether that's uh, things dropping or the sound, you know, giving you things crack and move when you walk, and yeah, just all that kind of little details that add so much more and making this a very immersive world. The three brothers. What are we looking yes. at? <laughs> Inspired by three brothers, I guess. Oh, mm. the Warwick brothers. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a very weird free mountains because they're also very weird. Um, the tops are actually not covered by ice, but there's this, this, this very weird, almost black glass kind of thing. And when the sunlight hits it, it sends out this weird, almost hollow graphic kind of color spectrum, color show, light show. I, I can, which one's Karen? Let us know in the comments below. I think the or, little one. The little oh, one. oh, wow. Shots fired. All right. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and here's the uh, death rows at the bottom of the fall. Yes. Yeah. So that's also uh, something pretty cool. I'm not going to say too much about because I, I don't know what is known about these things. Don't say it. If we don't, if we're not sure we don't want to say it, don't say it. We just want to show exactly. it and have people be intrigued and understand what they're in for in this region. Yes. If they're interested in owning a piece of it or just exploring it uh, or both. Uh, very, very cool. And here's the frozen court cracked and broken, surrounded yeah. by ice walls. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of the region is inaccessible from just uh, uh, from the frozen court. The frozen court is like what's below at the waterfall. It's like this giant icy lake and it's all broken and cracked and things are actually sort of giving you opportunities to find things between the ice, etc. But there's also a wall that you can't always climb, but there's ways you can get up there which I will not really give away. It's okay. There'll be YouTube tori- tutorial videos on how to do that, I'm sure. Exactly. Uh, okay, interesting. We're introducing some more of that pink color palette here in the yeah, frozen court. So some, this is up at like the show. higher points here within this area? Uh, I think the the ice wall is just not as visible as it should be. But ah, okay. basically the, on, on the horizon, there should be like a giant ice wall. Yeah. Ah, got it. Once again, just concept art, guys, to help yes. everyone get an idea of what the feel and the different aspects and elements of this region should be. Exactly. Yeah. Very, very cool. Wow. Just look at the colors in the distance back there. I mean, I'm just going to sit there and just look around. <laughs> be a tourist, yeah. if you will, in this region. This is my second favorite right now, I'll be honest. Um, I'm really, really loving the, our, our kind of take on the wintry, cold region. Um, yeah, we we still definitely want it to feel vibrant. You know, it doesn't have to be as moody and depressing mm-hmm. as sometimes it can be. So this is fair our, enough. Our yeah, Shardbluff Labyrinth, moody and depressing, if you will. This region, 
very, very different. And once again, you can travel up, up, up that thousand meter fall maybe, but also yep. you can go down, down, down large holes across the frozen cord. Yeah. So there's these, uh, these cracks and chasms, and there's also these holes that sort of bring you into almost like a tunnel system underneath the ice. Mm -hmm. And that's also another, yeah, almost its own region that you can actually, you can explore. So that's pretty cool. Like a sub region, if you will. Got it. Traveling through the ice. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Ah, and here it is underneath that frozen court. You're talking about what? Look at this. Yes. Oh, it's an and ice it's cave. Magical. It already yeah. is magical. Just look at the concept art is magical. This is nuts. Holy moly. Look it's at the this. light flickering everywhere. And, you know, the, the sound. Just imagine the sounds that you can hear of the cracks and the, the reverb and in. the crystallization. Yes. And, oh, wow. And the sound as you step exactly. on the snow and ice. I snow can cracking. feel it. Yeah. That's Holy moly. Idea. Hopefully uh, Unreal Engine has some good reflection engines and what have you and translucency tools because this this is going to be a this one's going to be interesting to pull off from a frozen cave standpoint. Wow, that's interesting. Um, that's yeah. so cool. And oh wow, we can go even deeper. Evidently, uh, into yes. P Podotas is that how you pronounce that? Yes. Yeah, that's um, another drop into oblivion. I guess it's uh, mm, okay. You can make it all the way down. Um, Was it Crimson and, Waste? We had that opportunity to go down into Oblivion or Halcyon Sea. Halcyon Sea. Okay, so Halcyon Sea had its I own know. right, its own algae-ish, uh, tra tra uh, interesting downward tra traversal into the abyss. This is once again another slippery, pillarsy downward traversal situation, making it all the more difficult to get down. Yes, but you can actually eventually get down. Mm. unlike the other one so that's, got it uh, and there's there's another area for you to explore down there even deeper wow this is so <laughs> nuts and here's the bottom yeah yeah there's a uh, a geyser kind of thing going here is this um, this is that what this is right here yeah there okay. there's better shots of that as well internally yeah. but um yeah there's, just con it's just concept art, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, yeah. There's there's going to be geysers and hot bubbling water here. So as, this is one of the few regions where you actually see some rock exposed. So you can actually see the base of the mountain where she's standing on. And you see this sort of cool mix where you see you have this frozen or a molten away ice mixing in with the, with the rocks uh, underneath. And that's going to be a very cool, cool kind yes, of it is. area to be in. I love the ice pillars, the way they feel almost like uh, stretched yeah. across. That's a really interesting visual um, kind of trick or idea there. It's not just stalactites and stalagmites. Um, the pillars uh, are, are almost feel like they're, they're, they could pop at any moment, um, which is really interesting. And then cave in. <laughs> Maybe. Gamers Maybe. find out if, if that's <laughs> what's going to happen there. And then here's Skelter's Maze, or the entrance yeah. rather to Skelter's Maze, inviting you in. Once again, with um, this, this wall is, um, and then a small opening, huh? Yeah, this is. But we're now back up on the surface of the frozen court, so on the lake. Okay. And at, at the west side, there's like the the Skelter's Maze, and it's sort of like a hidden area with a lot of broken pillars that are so smoothed off that they actually sort of start to become almost mirror-like. So going in there becomes just you know, uh, mind bogglingly hard to navigate and find your way. Okay. Yet another yeah. difficulty in this very, very difficult and hostile world world to be a part of. And then here is just a, an insane looking geyser. El yeah. Elksis hall geyser. Yes. So, um, there's also some other cool shots of this one internally. Um, but yeah, this is uh, once you make it through the Skelter's Maze, there's one area that's called the Oxus Hall, uh, which is what's inspired by the, um, there's this church kind of thing in Rome, which has like this chapel and there's like this one hole in the, in the top that always has that light coming in, which is very magical. And we thought that would be cool to sort of have that geyser, you know, blowing up and, uh, get that very cool effect with the sunlight of then the water vapor coming down, giving this sort of uh, rainbowy 
kind of look and it also sort of washes the floor completely clean you know like a, like a uh ice track basically got Just it track, smooths yeah. it out um exactly. as well um, once again inspired by real life or uh, elements here on on earth uh in reality and then turning it to the cranking it to a 10 in terms of fantasy experiences and then here's a D Dim Dimitar's, Cove. Dimitar's yeah. okay sorry Dimitar's cave sorry about that uh th once again the un th what's striking me right now is the underground experiences in alluvium yeah. are surprising you know I, I, I was thinking more <laughs> overground ones or we would be going up using jet boots and jumping up but there's I feel like most of the freaking game is under the ground or, 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 mm, or a lot yeah. in a lot of the regions a lot of the exploration is underground versus above yeah it, it I'm not sure um, if that is always deliberate. Uh, it's it is cool that you sort of ha give players that extra dimension, you know, instead mm -hmm. of just it. You know, it gives you places to hide things, and uh, it's just just a different way, a different approach of doing things. And especially when you have something like a giant frozen lake, like it's it's too. Uh, how do you say that? Um, it it's, would be a wasted opportunity to not go in there, you know? Makes sense. Yep. It invites you in in an interesting way um, to go deeper. Um, yeah. And But we give both opportunities, right? We give 1,000 foot falls and the Mount Everest <laughs> of Alluvium, and then we give deep, deep, deep abysses at the same time for maximum exploration and interest. And ends Ridge with gigantic structures here. This is almost like a alien-esque to me was my first impression of this area so tell us about it um yeah i'm this these are the same kind of stuff that are around the fall the entrance below to the fall so i'm i'm not i'm not sure what i can say about this but these are very say nothing beautiful weird <laughs> structures yeah beautiful weird structures indeed look how gorgeous that is holy moly i've never seen anything like that and of course, oh, and here's something interesting. There's a heat source um, yeah. located in the north of the region. Yeah. So in um, Alluvium Zero, there are these fuel fragments called solons. And this is one of those things. Um, it's actually laying there on melting away everything that comes near it. And it's just uh, sitting there. It's not hot enough that it can sort of melt all the rock around it, but it hot enough to sort of slowly melt away every ice that's around it and that's yeah it's a kind of cool area to visit to also sort of like visit something that's from alluvium zero in this region to sort of get that up close feel of what it's what that thing actually is you know exploring the alluvium universe in multiple ways whether that's exactly a, right whether that's a town builder game or whether that's an overworld experience very, very cool. And here's the exit of the hearth and entrance to Transphere. Yeah. Looks like we're getting a bit more lush plant life in this yeah. area, not being uh, killed by the cold. Exactly. So this is um, on the north side of the mountain. Something sort of like cracked open. Uh, the ice cracked open and it sort of created this, uh, how would you say, like a safe zone from the wind and the cold. Um, maybe it's also closer to a, a heat source like the the heart that you just saw because that's sort of like behind that um, entrance that you're seeing there. Mm -hmm. um, and this is actually one of the only areas in all of Tiger Boreal that there's grass and there's plants and there's actual life uh, living here. That's not icy, so... And, and then here's the sanctuary. Uh, like, well, like we mentioned earlier, it's a cold, lifeless mountain. But here we have a sanctuary. Uh, yeah. Almost this almost rainbow-esque <laughs> uh, element here uh, to kind of drive the point home. Uh, but <laughs> interesting. Yeah. yeah. And these are very, uh, very weird kind of uh, yeah area. The, the blue flowers that you see, I think, are called wolfbane. And it wouldn't be alluvium if they wouldn't try to kill you. So. Yep. Everything's trying to murder you. The more beautiful it is, it, the more it's trying to murder you. Um, so yeah. uh, ain't that how it is? There it is. Guys, holy moly, was that incredible. Look, if you guys want to find out more 
about land and regions. I mentioned the full-blown articles from earlier. Also, you can go to alluvium.io slash land to learn more if you want to actually own a piece of one of these regions yourself um, through that town builder game we were talking about earlier. And of course, you can experience all of these regions um, in the overworld uh, as those overworld experiences are being built and rolled out to players over time. Roger, I just want to say a hu- we went way over time on this. You were so generous with your time today. No Thank worries. you so much for going through all of these regions with us today. And we're so excited to see what else you and the team create and how that comes to life. Thank you. No, no problem. It was, uh, this was fun revisiting everything. So, uh, yeah, it was cool. Kind of funny how much I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. You did a great job. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of you viewers for joining us and for uh, giving us your time uh, to really understand and to explore and to travel through the regions of Alluvium. We're going to bring you a lot more content like this in the future. And all of the clips of this content will be located on our Clips channel if you want to investigate each region individually. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode of Alluvium Insider.